The signal to evacuate was given at dawn when volcano experts detected a, a slight increase in activity from Mount Pinatubo last night. By late morning, a cloud of ash could be seen filling the sky. Video shot from helicopters show Mount Pinatubo as venting steam and ash on the northwest side of the mountain, away from Clark. But at alert level four, the volcano could erupt within the next 24 hours. A member of the U.S. Geological Survey says Mount Pinatubo is in the advanced stages of eruption. Uh, there really isn't a major change in the seismicity that, that, that has taken place over that time period. Uh, so we're in a kind of uh, an unstable uh, uh, holding pattern uh, right now, waiting to see uh, how, how the eruption develops. The top priority for Clark officials this morning was getting people safely out of the area. Staging areas were set up on the Clark flight line to make the evacuation of over 14,000 people as smooth as possible. After picking up some last-second refreshments in the form of snacks, juices, and bottled water, the convoy made it out Mabalakit Gate on the way to Subic. The staggered evacuation plan reduced congestion to the flight line and evened out the traffic flow to the Bay Area. About 1,500 people remain at Clark performing essential duties. Security police are highly mobile around a facility and are utilizing military working dogs to secure the housing areas. Civil engineering and prime beef teams are keeping essential services online and maintaining the facility. No word on how long Clark will be evacuated. It all depends on the temperament of Mount Pinatubo. I would be sure that, that we wouldn't be able to say in 48 hours that uh, it's all over, uh, we can uh, uh, return to a perfectly normal uh, lifestyle and, and the geologists are leaving. I, I'm sure that won't be the case. To give you an update on the evacuation procedure since noon today, according to 13th Air Force public affairs officials, all non-essential personnel were on the road to Subic by 1 p.m. today. Base officials point out the evacuation procedure went very smooth and are very pleased with the results. But this was only half the story on this day of evacuation. Back to Navy journalist Bill Houlihan in the Bay Area. An increased level of activity atop Mount Pinatubo sent Clark residents traveling southward on San Fernando Highway towards Subic Bay this morning. Bay Area officials began the process of trying to house the evacuees upon their arrival. The Honorable Nicholas Platt, the U.S. Ambassador to the Philippines, was on hand in Subic Bay to make sure everything was running smoothly. As Pinatubo showed signs of increased activity throughout the night, Clark officials and volcano experts decided to move the largest air base outside the continental United States into Volcan Level 4 thereby initiating an evacuation to Subic Bay. Close to 15,000 Clark residents began a slow procession to Subic around 6 a.m. Ambassador Platt arrived early this afternoon and greeted thousands of Clark residents as they checked in at the Sampaguita Club. I wanted to come and see firsthand what the situation was. I wanted to get a feel for the evacuation, and I wanted to uh, show that the embassy cares about what's happening out here began arriving at Subic's Triangle Field around 8.30 this morning. By mid-afternoon, the field was teeming with Clark residents who were en route to the Sampaguita Club, where they were assigned billeting to one of various places, including QB in San Miguel. Ambassador Platt said he is pleased with the evacuation thus far, and his reports will reflect that. I want to be able to report through my channels to the president and to others uh, in our government uh, how things are going here. The situation is very much under control. I'm very proud of the arrangements that have been made. But I think it's important for me to, to come to the spot, talk to some of our uh, people who've moved, and um, just get a direct feel for what's going on. While in the past it has been the Navy and Air Force working together to help out our host nation in a variety of relief efforts, the two services showed this morning the ability to work together for the good of both bases at Subic and Clark. Ambassador Platt expressed his gratitude. I don't believe that I've ever seen an operation like this where one entire facility is in effect emptied into another. And uh, it shows extraordinary grasp of logistics, uh, great spirit, uh, and uh, I think that both, both the communities are to be congratulated. 
Bay Area officials still request your help in terms of housing Clark residents. Thanks to your help, many families have settled into temporary lodging, but more are without accommodations. You are encouraged to monitor Channel 10 to find out how you can help. Mount Pinatubo erupted at 8.45 this morning. Tonight, an FEN News special with Air Force Sergeant Rusty Barfield. The last two days, FEN News has provided updates on Mount Pinatubo from Clark. But with the events this morning, Air Force Sergeant Chuck Kramer and I have bolted to Subic to bring you an overview of the day's activities. Let's begin by taking you back to 8.45 this morning. The waiting game didn't last long at Clark, less than 48 hours after all non-essential personnel evacuated. Mount Pinatubo erupted, sending ash and gas thousands of feet into the sky. This video was shot while the last 1,500 people at Clark were bugging out to escape the danger of the volcano. The scope of the eruption could be seen for miles, but safety was the main concern as Mount Pinatubo continued to fill the sky. So anybody that uh, is stationed, has relative station to Camp O'Donnell, they are safe. They have evacuated safely from Camp O'Donnell. They are in Camp O'Donnell. Uh, it is safe at Camp O'Donnell uh, right now. I've got contact uh, with uh, Major McGuire, the commander out there. They have a convoy prepared in case it's uh, needed, and uh, they're ready to evacuate at uh, a moment's notice, and they've got safe passage routing. The eruption took on presidential interest. Philippine President Corazon Aquino flew into the Dao evacuation point to discuss the magnitude of the eruption with volcano experts and base commanders. After looking at seismic activity with volcanologists, the president addressed the military community at Subic and Clark. Excuse me, President Aquino, do you have any comments for the U.S. military uh, contingent? In fact, I was just asking General Studer um, how long you know, the uh, evacuees in Subic would be staying, so it's all really dependent on uh, what the findings are here. Are you pleased with the evacuation that's been uh, going on on the other well, side of the mountain? In fact, uh, Secretary Ramos, who is the chairman of the National Disaster Coordinating Council, has been uh, at work months before this happened, so we have been prepared for this eventuality. Secretary Ramos, are you pleased with uh, what's been taking place so far yes, on the evacuation? Uh, so far it appears that uh, all of the local councils, led by the mayors and the governors, as well as the uh, community leaders, have uh, done their jobs. and. Uh, there have been no fatalities or uh, not even injuries reported so far, arising out of the uh, volcano itself. So thank you. Uh, thank you for the support of everybody. Even though Clark is on the back doorstep of the volcano, the ash and debris from the eruption drifted northwest. Navy journalist Bill Houlihan has more on the effects of the eruption on the San Miguel community. Almost immediately following the 8.54 a.m. explosion, Bay Area residents could look up and see the massive cloud produced by Pinatubo's eruption. The ashfall began to accumulate about 25 miles northwest of Subic Bay, near San Marcelino. The residents of this small town didn't know what to expect. Uh, the uh, sun uh, is falling out of the sky. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, it, it's like the end of the world, you know. It's yeah. very dark. The San Miguel detachment of the Subic Naval Station didn't fare much better, receiving as much ashfall as their neighbors in San Marcelino. The ash started falling here in San Miguel around 9.30 a.m. The ground is covered with a sooty-type substance. It's a granular, sandy-type stuff. It's not as light or as flaky as you might expect the ash to be. To give you an example, the greens on the golf course look like sand traps. Here in San Miguel, the cleanup effort should be a massive undertaking. As the ash descended upon San Miguel, those stationed there and residents from Clark headed indoors to escape the ash which, according to one person, burned the skin upon contact. Senior Master Sergeant Lloyd Sisson from Clark said this morning's ashfall was a harrowing experience. Word, we saw the big cloud, and everybody uh, came out uh, to see it. It looked uh, what you would uh, picture a uh, nuclear explosion going off as far as in the distance, and the cloud mushroomed up and then spread out, and it was all uh, jagged and tumbling and rumbling uh, toward us. We all went in, and it got heavier and heavier, and the... Uh, day turned into night and got pitch black out uh, with this stuff coming down. Covering the roads, golf course, and creek beds, the results of Pinatubo's early morning eruption proved to be enough to temporarily halt all activity at San Miguel. POV travel was temporarily restricted. Master Sergeant Sisson claimed the soot's sheer density caused complications. And all this stuff was filtering in through everything. Couldn't roll the windows down because it was dripping off the car. Essential personnel at Clark, a convoy headed to the Pampanga Agricultural College at the base of Mount Ariat. That's about 15 miles from Clark. 
By 4.30 this afternoon, the convoy had returned to Clark. Air Force Sergeant Chuck Kramer was also on the scene this morning as Mount Pinatubo blew her top. He provides an update on the mountain's condition. According to David Harlow from the U.S. Geological Survey, the column of ash reached heights in excess of 40,000 feet. The most intense part of the eruption lasted close to 30 minutes, but most of the activity occurred on the far side of the mountain, away from Clark. We've also gotten reports that a pyroclastic flow, which is this glowing avalanche of, of, of rock that it, it kind of explodes its way down a, down a valley, very similar to the uh, Unzen eruption, went down the uh, Maronut River about four or five kilometers. And that, other than that, uh, uh, we have not heard other reports on, on, on any of the impacts on the other side. Even though this eruption was extremely dramatic, According to Mr. Harlow, there could be more to come. Uh, right now, we're having a very intense earthquake swarm, which is probably related to the fact that we've evacuated some material underneath the, the uh, peak, and it's now fracturing, and rock is collapsing into, in, into that void. This morning's eruption could be seen for miles as ash poured out of the crater for close to two hours. Volcanologists will continue to monitor the mountain as long as it's necessary. I'm Air Force Sergeant Chuck Kramer for this FEN News Special. 13th Air Force Commander Major General William Studer was very pleased with the quick evacuation this morning. Throughout the monitoring phase, General Studer provided guidance through the chain of command. The eruption this morning proved the evacuation plan works. When it was time to execute, uh, there was no hesitation. Uh, no one said, I wonder what I'm supposed to be doing. Everybody reacted properly. They didn't panic. They moved in an expeditious manner to take care of uh, any and all of their friends that might have been involved in uh, security posts around the base to ensure that there wasn't anybody that had been left behind. All of that was done exactly the way you would want it to do. It was, it was textbook performance. General Studer pointed out he feels more confident if Clark essential personnel have to bug out once again. Communication is high on the general's agenda. He feels the command is providing enough information so people know safety is number one on his list of priorities. And all of our people that are down there uh, can with, uh, with a great deal of confidence say, I know that my husband or my boyfriend or whatever is being taken care of and that, um, that uh, they're not in any immediate danger. In closing, General Studer appreciated the level of concern from top Philippine and U.S. officials. For those at Clark and the other facilities, it was a day that will be remembered for a lifetime. The eruption of Mount Pinatubo brought out a variety of reactions. It's pretty exciting. Uh, let's hope we can get everybody out of here. It's just another day on the job, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> First thing, uh, we heard something over the radio that uh, the guys had alerted there was an explosion. I turned around and looked and watched it come up over the trees at the stables. Came yeah. straight up, yeah, about this fast. And that's was there, did you hear any sound or anything? No, no, we didn't hear anything. Hey, I was up at the wall, and I got the heck out. I seen that thing started going, and I was gone. Yeah. You're going all right. Managed to bug out without any problems. That's great. That's yeah, cop a little film for posterity. I think my underwear is about two and a half miles that way. <laughs> and that closes out this special edition of FEN News. We'll continue to provide updates on the volcano's condition and the services in the Bay Area. For Air Force Sergeant Chuck Kramer and Navy Journalist Bill Houlihan, I'm Air Force Sergeant Rusty Barfield. Have a good night. Believe it or not, right now it's uh, not even 4 o'clock in the afternoon at this evacuation point at the base of Mount Orion. 
We've gotten this, uh, it's a little bit larger than ash is what's falling right now from Mount Pinatubo, which has been erupting uh, steadily all afternoon. We've also had a number of earthquakes and even some thunderstorms on a wild afternoon in the Philippines.